Good morning, everybody. Today I'm going to take up a few of the boards on the deck, the 2x6s, on the ends, so I can inspect the ends of the joists. I crawled up under there today, and uh, I see what is going to be four 2x8s that are going to have to be replaced. Okay, what I did is I marked here these two are going to have to be replaced. There's one right here, and then of course the real rotten one is over here that you can't really nail anything to. From here, where this nail is, to here is 8 inches. So, um, what I'll probably do is to sister another one up in there close to it and then remove the other one, keeping the weight These two 2x8s two here that just happen to be from the bargain bin, keeping those in place before I remove the joist. The joist over here, as I said, is fine. The joist right here is fine. I, I went under there with the, uh, with the awl, and uh, I inspected it, and it's perfect. But these two aren't. This one here has been sisted up with some pressure-treated 2x4s and stuff just to be able to nail this stuff in when I did this years ago. So this this one's got to be replaced, this one's got to be replaced, this one here's got to be replaced, and what I'll probably do is just remove this, and uh, before I pull this out, I'll put one right here, and that'll leave a little overhang here, and there'll be no beam against the house, because this deck was built when we had the old mobile home. What I'm going to be doing today is I'm going to be cutting out one, two, three out of here. Cause this is, I looked up underneath there. This thing is rotted completely. I'm going to remove these three over here up to this point. I won't remove them here because you need to be able to walk through here. I just need to inspect in this corner a little better than going up underneath. And then over here, I'm going to remove this one and this one completely. I'm going to take them right out completely. Now when I do the joists, I'll just bring them up from underneath and I'll just slide them through and get some more 2x8 joist hangers and, and add them in there. And then uh, after they're supported in there and up underneath these two pieces, uh, then I can remove the uh, the rotted ones that are here. about this. This crisscross is rotted right here. I'm going to be taking that out anyway, so I don't care if I nick it. I just don't want to nick this pressure treated 2x8 that I got over here on the end that I put in a few years ago, as I mentioned in an earlier video. I just want to get this out of the way here. I could have used my regular saw instead of this trim saw here. Cut a little faster. We 
moving this a little, but the real support is on these two 2x8s right here. So, I'm not too worried about that. There's some wood left in that in that edge two by eight. I thought it was all rotted out. It is pretty much rotted out. like I use 16s in that. They appear to be. Either 12s or 16s. Well, of course, as you can see, this was patched before. This piece was part of the original decking, of course. And these two, of course, as I said, were added pressure treated along with all this other stuff which is all pressure treated but it cracks anyways. Uh, this block here is a pressure treated one here. This is all going to come out. This I got to get out but I don't want to disturb the um, I'm, I'm moving this a little bit. There's only two nails in here but it ain't going to go anywhere because it's sitting on there so it's not going to put a strain on the window and stuff. This uh, this joist has to be replaced, and this is the one I was telling you about next to the house. So we're going to do, uh, after we move everything else, what we're going to do is we're going to make sure that this is supported. So in other words, we don't remove any of this. Uh, after we get everything out, we don't remove this one, and we don't remove this one here. Uh, we may remove the one near the house because that's not really supporting anything. And then I'll put a new one, a new 2x8 on this side of the post and bolt it because we can't nail it. We can't swing the hammer because there's no clearance. Not even with my palm nail, I wouldn't be able to get in there. So it's only about like three and a half inches. So we're going to put a 2x8 there, put a carriage, a galvanized carriage bolt through it. And then we remove this. And we'll run another one up in this area somewhere and then we'll remove this joist. So that's where we're at right now. If you want to crawl down under here with me you can see where I added the 2x4 pressure treated some of them from the bargain bin a few years ago when I sistered up this uh, to support and try to repair the deck. But that whole damn thing is going to all be uh, removed along with this one over here uh, which you can see is sisted up too. So naturally we're not going to leave it that way. That's temporary. But you can see what I did all the way down the line here. And so these joists will be removed and new ones will be put in. I'm not removing the whole deck, all the decking today. I just want to get a start on this. So we're going to remove this one and this one today from here right up to this point because this is the new addition we put on in 2003 as I would mentioned so many times before. So we're going to remove these two next. What we're going to do is just cut them and pull them out of there and uh, we'll put temporary plywood down like we did here just so nobody will trip over it. The same way over here, we'll just slap a piece of plywood over there. But nobody, we don't have any kids coming here anyways. But we just want to put something there. Um, 
the orange wire is the uh, the 104 that I got going for the generator and the yellow wire is for the outlet out here on the deck where my thing is plugged in. Now for safety reasons naturally I bang these nails out and uh, I verified that these are number 12s because there's a brand new number 12. So I use number 12 in there. So here longer. Now leave the number 12s. Let's see, 16. I think is the next size up. So I knew I was either 12s or 16s, and I use three in each uh, two by six, as you can see. But you know, this is this is more of the condition of a 28-year-old deck, 27, 28 years old, and uh, a couple of me worse than that. But this is about as bad as it got. We'll finish nail getting these out of here. I'll put them to them in the scrap pile here and there'll be firewood for somebody who needs it. They over here uh, on one of these two that I told you I'm going to remove today. We got uh, rot there and uh, of course we got rot here. So But overall, you know, could be worse. I mean, we can keep patching it. Who the hell wants to do that, you know? Now, oh, by the way, um, I called last year for the pricing of the 2 by 6 8-footers. And man, have they gone up from last year. They were a little under $5 for a pressure-treated 2 by 6 8-footer. And they're probably a few cents less for Douglas fir. They're over a dollar more a piece. So that's going to be like over $25 for just the added cost of these here. The 2 by 8 12 footers are an average of about $13, $14 a piece uh, to about $10.50 for a Douglas fir. So what I'm going to do this year, I'm going to put pressure treated 2x8s in here and I'm going to put Douglas fir on here instead of pressure treated. And I'm going to tell you why. I'm going to tell you why. Because pressure treated wood will twist on you. On the front porch over there, if you watch my other videos, before I had a porch overhead and made the porch a couple years ago, I had rails like this here, 2 by 6 Douglas fir. Eventually they rotted out. I replaced it twice with pressure treated and twice the wood twisted, even though it was nailed down. I don't want that happening here. This is Douglas fir. It lasted, you might as well say 25 years. It should have been replaced at the 25 year mark, but it lasted 28 years. It's going to outlast me. I'll be long dead before 25 years is up. So it's going to outlast me. I'm going to put Douglas fir down here. At least it's stable. And I'll just uh, put, the, uh, even though you can't get oil-based wood preservative anymore, I'm going to just put water uh, the, that milk stuff on there. But I will use pressure treated and the 2x8 stringers, so I don't have to worry about them going bad. You see these rails here? These are original. These are always the same wood, Douglas fir, as these. They were built the same time, came in on the same lumber delivery, and the difference with the rail is you're easier to paint, so you keep it painted. Even though you can't use, uh, you can't get oil-based uh, wood preservative anymore. Because I always painted it is why none of it's rotted out. I never had to replace any of it. Even in the corners here, I had used wood filler at the time. I don't recall what wood filler I used, but it was, wasn't Bondo. And uh, keep the water out of it. And, you know, they're good. Of course, this is the new addition here. But you can see where I put the, uh, the 45 here. 
So, uh, no, I think my recycle truck just came in. So, I'm going to continue with Douglas fir and only use pressure treated on the joists. Not only will pressure treated crack, uh, twist on you, it'll crack. This is pressure treated here. Now, see how the big cracks get, get in here? Yes, you get cracks here too, but if I use pressure treated, I gotta wait several months before I can paint it, which means it's gonna crack, or it's gonna open up and look like hell. So that's what I'm decided to do. It's a few cents cheaper uh, per board to use the Douglas fir, but it isn't a few cents so much as the fact that I don't want to rip this out every time one twists on me. I don't want that. Getting a little better view here of this from this angle. I'm not worried about this crisscross as I said because it's all rotted. It's rotted out here so I gotta replace this anyways. And this is pressure treated. This was put in like I said before a few years back uh, my neighbor when he was living here gave me this eight foot two by eight that's a two by eight right there uh, so it worked good and now we got a problem here on this end not on that end down there that end is fine but this end is rotted there's a double two by eight here this is rotted um, this was replaced all pressure treated as I said it just needs painting again this is pressure treated so we're going to have to clean this out and replace this too uh, but we have to be very careful not to take the support off we got to keep this on and there's a joist here as you can see we got to keep this on until we get a new one in here we can't put the new one in here until we work on on this here I don't know how well you can see that but I can go right in there. So, what I'm going to do, we're going to sister up another one. Let me move this. I may, I may support something down to the ground. I don't want this thing moving, so I can cut this end out and insert another, another some more wood into here, into this area here. That is because I didn't use pressure treated there. It's funny that this part is the only part that wore out, probably because of the drippage and everything else. I'll take you up underneath here. Oh, I'll show you. Hey, these are good. Because I, I, I uh, used the double on this, and same as the other end. But you can see, this joist got to replace. This is the old telephone line. This is underground feed telephone wire. Uh, when, we, uh, when I had a phone out in the uh, shed. I don't have a phone working, working phone in the shed anymore. Because there was a short on one of the wires up underneath the trailer. Uh, that caused our telephones to malfunction. And I didn't bother calling it in there to correct it. But anyways. That joist at the far end. This one's fine. This one's got to be replaced. This one's got to be replaced. It's a dead outlet that are no longer used. It hasn't been used in 20, 20 some years. Uh, I don't have outlets like that anymore. I don't use that. And same with that one. That's just a junction box. It's no longer used. When I used to have a switch to turn the light, the pole light on and off. I have that too inside the house now. Uh, so there's, your, there's the joist, the way they're running underneath here. So... We're going to remove these two boards here. You can see the bottom of the, uh, uh, the discoloration in the uh, uh, bottoms of those two by sixes. You know, if I use Douglas fir on this, it lasts another 25 years, 20, even 20 years. I'll be worm food by then anyways. Who the hell cares if it, die, if it rots out after that? Now, I can't get my saw to go all the way up into here. Or we're going to take a, a cut in this area and lift up. 
and try to be careful not to disturb this. These are double joists here, one for the old deck, of course, with the original, uh, the 2x8s, and then the other 2x8 was uh, assisted up there to make this addition here. present time and we don't want to cut into the end one on that. You don't want to put too much pressure on the other one there. Now that's why we didn't nail in the crisscross here, because it would make it harder to get out. When we get the new one in, we slide it in, as I said before. Oh, man. Well... We don't want to put a strain on this, although it's not going to come out. It's carriage bolts, galvanized carriage bolts, holding this addition up onto here. But we want to be careful and get my head wrapped here. See if I can do it with this from on the side here. Well, we have one other way to do this. Three eighth inch stainless steel bar. I don't know, it was in the trash at work years ago when I was working. You never know when you need something like this. So we'll just jam this. The wood is the wood that I put under here was too big, so we'll just put that underneath. Drive that. I'm going to hold the camera here. In fact, I'm going to hold the camera handheld here. That's what we want to do. Get that out of there. You can see that joist is in good shape. That's the original deck joist, and there's another one sistered up, as I said, when we made this other... Oh, oh, mackerel. Oh, I didn't expect that. Damn it all. Oh, well. I've never used it. Anyway, that's a shame. Oh! Okay. Yeah. You see where that... 
galvanized carriage bolts are and that's some old wiring that I no longer used on the deck from way back in 86 Yeah. yeah, we'll go with Douglas for, I'll tell you. Of course, I have no idea if the Douglas fur they, they have nowadays is as good as back in 86. Okay, ladies and geraniums. Ah. Well, let's see, we got that out. And there's the old dead line there that I had. And there's the old outlet. I just, when I assisted it up, I just banged it in there. We no longer use that, of course. And this cut off over here. This joist is in good shape. So, and you can see the end joist how nice it is. So, when we get the new 2x6s, we can just bring them right up to here. Now, we'll remove the rest of this, but we're not doing that today. We're going to remove the rest of these here up to the up to the door just these two here only and that'll give me a better look at the ends of the joist but this joist is definitely going to be replaced this joist is going to be in the other two so um we know we got to replace four you know uncle dorkle is still sleeping and i ain't disturbing him because i don't want him out here watching me a little bit into this because this is going to be replaced anyways but I'm only going to be able to cut so far but this thing's rotted right in here anyways so we'll keep it on the outside of the beam here a little ways <laughs> see how fast that slipped through at the end there that tells me that thing's rotted out pretty bad. I don't think there's any uh, wood left over here. Very, very little. get my wrecking tool that I had showed you earlier out of the shed. We're trying not to split the joist by forcing this over because I did that on the uh, when I put the post in uh, and I'm going to try not to do that and I'm also going to try not to use this again because I hammered this out not perfect I don't want that to happen again, so we're going to do it. I'm going to step on this and get it out. 180 pounds, let's see if we can do it. Yep, took 180 pounds, it did it. Yep. Well, you can see you got ends rot, end rot. And of course it's pretty bad over here. You know? In 28 years, I'll look like this, but you'd have to dig me up to find it, uh, you know, to actually get a good look at me.
care too much about tearing up the joists over here. Do a little more cutting on that to get that out of there because I went around. This is the old switch. I don't. This is no longer hooked up. Hasn't been used in years. Years ago, before we had a pole light timer, we got that all in the house now on underground wire and stuff. So that's just there, and I never removed it. I think we'll take the skill saw and cut it about into here so I can manage this a little bit. We don't need to see me do every little cut here. Well, I got it out. I'm going to bang these nails over. And you can see the joist here. Now, I'm just going to buy some new joist hangers. I'm not going to even try to salvage these. When I put the new joist in, I'll put it in over on this side here. Now, you can see this is the original crisscross, one of the original crisscrosses, because this is the new one I put in. And you can see now why these nails have to be removed. I'll see if I can get that out after off camera. But you can see this has definitely got to be replaced. I mean, I can sister up a small one like I did the repairs before I showed you, but that's not the way we're going to do it this time. We're going to we're going to put another one here. When we get everything supported, then we'll, we, we'll cut this out. We'll cut it right out of there. And the same with this one. We gotta, we gotta finish getting this out. We'll do that off camera. I gotta get these nails out because my luck, I'll kneel on the damn things. When I was a kid, I stepped on a nail. But I was only uh, about 14 or 15 and I don't think I got a tetanus shot either. Oh no, I don't think I did. Well, I got that out. As I said, these here are fine. These are fine. This isn't. This isn't. This looks good here, but it isn't because uh, down in the middle it's bad. So we know we need that. We're going to eliminate that end one, as I said. So we're going to we're going to put one on the other side of this beam. Take this out. Then we're going to put another one in this area here, take this out, and then we'll put one here, there. So we got one, two, I think we're going to need only three, but I'll decide that later. And as you can see, I had a little time getting it out because I had made an actual hole here, drilled and put the pipe down through. But I can just as easily remove that damn thing. Matter of fact, I'm going to. Serves no purpose anyways. And it'll be one less cutout I have to make over there for the new 2x6. We're going to remove this. And that's all we're going to do for removal for today. Now when I built this, it was built out of 2x6s. The 21 inch on center, not 16. Yeah, the 21 on, on center. So, we're not... Uh, we're not too worried about that. So we figure if we put a joist here, we get rid of this. Of course, we get rid of this after we put the you know new one in. Get this out of here. Put the new one in here and bolt it in. We'll get remo remove this. I'm going to take the screws out of here. Take this out and get this out of here. So we got one here. And that will be right about there. So 21 will be here. And then 42 or 43 will be right here, so that would be perfect. So let's say that's 21, and we're close enough. Twenty one, and this will be about 25, 24, somewhere around there. It's not rocket science. If I was building a house, or a regular floor, not not an inch and a half thick floor like this. 
you'd want the joist a little closer. You know, this deck is solid, even though this is all rotted here. That's all I can do until I uh, order the wood. But I am going to put some... I'm going to... I got some wood out in that pile out there. I'm going to lay some 2x6s, or at least one 2x6, or even a 2x8 in there, just for safety when you step out the door. And uh, I don't want to cut anything. Uh, but I'll put something in there just for safety that I can just lift up or tack it with a nail in each end or something. And that's all I'm going to do. And then when I'm ready to order the wood, make sure we get a couple of good days without rain. <laughs> Around here, it rains even a little bit every day. So you have to paint between raindrops, as I said before. You just have to, otherwise you'll never get the painting done. Well, that's the same way with the deck. We'll just uh, rip all this out when the time comes. I just wanted to make sure exactly what I need for Joyce. All right, I removed this. Now we're just going to put some wood in here. I don't need to make a video of that. It's only a temporary piece of wood that's going in there. Once again, thank you for watching. And it is a relief that, uh-oh, I hear Uncle Dorkle hollering in the house. You might not be able to hear him out here, but he's pissed because he wasn't able to come out here and supervise me. <laughs> you gotta love it.